Hello, thank you for joining me today. I'm Amanda Fowler of Inspiring Inkin. Welcome to my craft room. In today's video, we're going to be making this card. It's a, a Z fold card. I'm calling it a Z fold stand because we've got an additional piece here which makes it really stable when it's uh, stood on view. So let's turn the camera around and get started. Here's the card in close up. You can see I've used the um, shoe images and the handbag image from uh, the Best Dressed uh, Designer Series paper pack. Um, on this next card, I'm going to be using the same paper pack, but I'm going to be using flowers. Now, um, all of the measurements will be found if you scroll down, whether you're on YouTube or on my blog. Um, I'm going to be making the card using 12 inch cardstock but I'm also going to be putting a set of measurements for 11 inch cardstock um, if you don't have any 12 by 12. Um, so it, it's obviously the layout is exactly the same, but basically you'll, you'll just be um, moving some of the score lines. And I love this Z fold. This is, this is the way you've got the Z, um, but I'm calling it a Z fold stand because you've got this additional piece here that just secures it and um, makes it look like it's not floating in midair. So let's get started. I've got some old olive cardstock and these are the paper patterns that I'm going to be using. So we're going to start out with the card and we want a piece that is four inches by 12. move that out of the way and then we are going to score it at three inches and six. Obviously you can use your trimmer to score, it's just this is my my scoreboard, I love my scoreboard um, and I it's habit but I prefer working with it. So you've got the two score lines and basically you're going to fold the card in half um, landscape and then fold this piece back and that is how you make your Z. Okay, so that's all the scoring. We have now got to cut all of the layers and it, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but like I said, all of the measurements are... Um, below. So if you don't catch the measurements as I'm saying them, don't worry too much. Okay, so the first um, pieces I'm going to be doing are the Whisper White layers. So that's uh, these two layers here and this one here. So we need it to be at uh, two and three quarter inches wide and three and three quarter inches. So I need two that are that size. And then we need one, which is three and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then the patterned paper is two and a half by three and a half. You'll be able to see. So this piece is going to go on there with a small border around it. And then the same here. So two and a half. By three and a half. I'm going to use this strip so you can see on this card I've got a strip here so I'm going to use this and it is three and three quarter inches tall. Okay so if I show you where we're at with these so we've got these two pieces and then we've got this piece and this piece. So the insides of all the card is there. 
So now what we've got to do is this piece and the layers for this piece. So we're to bring back in the old olive cardstock. So the first layer is four and a half by three. Then that's <laughs> that's brilliant. That's cut already. So uh, that's four and a half by three. So this is four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And then we want this lovely patterned paper and what I actually want is I want these flowers here to be central so um, I'm going to put this piece of paper sort of over the top of where I want that to be so I'm going to cut here first and this is a trick actually that you can use whenever you're trying to put a piece of patterned paper on and you specifically want images so I want these leaves and these two flowers so I know that if I trim here, when I start cutting my piece of paper, um, I'll have the, the bits that I want where I need them to be. So I'm just going to cut there and then cut there. Okay, so this forgot what my measurements were so the next layer is four inches by two and a half so that's here so I want the two and a half first so I've got those leaves and those two flowers so I'm going to cut on this side oh actually four and a quarter no I can cut on this side did I say four or four and a quarter? It's four inches. Okay, no, I'm good because I can keep that one there. There we go. So I've got my two flowers and the leaves and actually I've got the most of that big flower as well. So that, yeah, that's gonna sit there like that. Okay, and that I think is all of the layers so I'll bring that one back in and we will start sticking everything together it's always easier um, to stick everything flat um, rather than kind of having folded up your card it just means then that everything that you do all lies straight. I seem to be getting glue everywhere today. I don't know. I don't know what it what it is. I think I'm just putting too much on. It's quite warm in here, um, so the glue's running quite quickly. So that one's there. We've got this piece. And then we can put these pieces onto the main card. For a new tombow that's beginning to beginning that I need to shake it. So the trick with tombow, if you have tombow, is to keep it stood upside down so that the glue is coming down to that tip. I've got this stand that Brian made for me to hold my glue. Um, so that works really well. But you can put it in a glass or a mug, something like that. That will work. 
but it's just come into the end of its end of its life so I'm having to shake it I love putting a white layer like this it really makes the the polka dots stand out so come on yeah I definitely need to get a new tumbo we'll probably make it to the end of the video without me having to go. Okay, so that piece folds like that. So that's all working well. We've got these layers as well now. So I'm going to put this layer here. Now, of course, this will work beautifully with stamped images. So just because I've chosen to use patterned paper, please do, do stamp. Um, that will work beautifully as well. I just thought for a change I would use some patterned papers and I've only recently got these papers and I love them so I'm a bit gutted that they're they're leaving the catalogue but I'm sure that if you can't get these papers you'll be able to get some other papers that will work really well or you might have papers in your stash might you <laughs> you're a crafter you'll have a stash Okay, so before we stick this on, we do need to do this little section here. So I need to stamp, I'm going to stamp in Blackberry Bliss. And I have got this Peaceful Moment stamp set fabulous stamp set I love the font on this happy birthday it's one of my favorites it's just really pretty I love the script sort of in combination um, with the with the capital letters as well so I'm just going to leave that for a second to dry um, whilst I do a little bit of fussy cutting I'm going to cut out one of these flowers here just as a um, a little decoration like I've got here and this is a great way of just adding a little bit of dimension as well I said the rhinestone will do that but a little flower will uh, just add a little bit of zing on there um, I'm just turning turning the paper there we go Ooh. and then I'm just going to curl this and snip in a little bit on these lines just so it will allow it to bend a bit more So you've just got a little bit more and then we'll put that rhinestone there in the centre. I'll punch out the happy birthday and because I'm going to be putting this flower on, I'm going to punch it out so it's in the top half. And then we will punch out this one in old olive as well and then we can layer those together and then the card is almost finished I've just got to put the last couple of bits on so put a tiny dot of glue there okay move that to one side so the first thing we're going to do is put this piece on now you want it to be equidistant both sides um, and you know I can see I've got one finger whip there and one there but you're only going to put glue on half of it 
Obviously you don't want to put glue on both pieces because then it's going to stick to this piece and then you're going to be sad. So, um, like I just showed you when you're cutting out a specific piece of paper, what I'm actually going to do is grab hold of this and flip it over, keep my finger on it, and I know that I need to put glue to the left of where that is. And so long as that's the only place I put glue, we will be okay. This is like a, a Tombow dance, shaking it to make it, make it work. Right, so I'm now gonna position that back on there like so and press it down. Okay, and then this piece, is going to go on here. Now you do have to be careful with your positioning of it because the circle, the edges of the circle need to meet the edges of the cardstock at the back so that it will stand straight. If you move it up too much, your card's gonna lean. Um, and if you stick it out over the edge, it's probably not gonna fit in your envelope. So it needs to go exactly um, lined up with those edges. This time I'm putting glue here on the corner of the card and the reason for that is because it's actually quite difficult to get it exactly right on here whereas if I put that down there like that I can just line it up and then just press it down and it will then be in exactly the right spot. Okay, so there we have a Z Fold stand card. Um, here's the other one. Move everything out of the way. So the same pack of paper, two completely different styles of card, um, even though they're the same, the same cutting and the same layout, but they do look very different. Thank you so much for joining me today. Please do subscribe to my blog and YouTube channel. You'll be then the first to hear when I have some new creative inspiration for you. All of the products that you've seen can be bought in my online store. You can find that either by going to my blog, www.inspiringinkin.com or scrolling down, whether you're on my blog or on YouTube, and there will be clickable links um, of the items that you've seen today and you can go direct to my online store. I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.